The cybersecurity landscape has changed dramatically over the past 24 to 36 months. Rapid cloud migration has created a new layer of security defense, sure, but that doesn't mean CISOs can relax. In many respects, it further complicates or at least changes the CISO's scope of responsibilities. In particular, the threat surface has expanded and that creates more seams and CISOs have to make sure their teams pick up where the hyperscaler clouds leave off. Application developers have become a critical execution point for cyber assurance. Shift left is the kind of new buzz phrase for devs, but organizations still have to shield right, meaning the operational teams must continue to partner with SecOps to make sure infrastructure is resilient. So it's no wonder that in ETR's latest survey of nearly 1,500 CIOs and IT buyers, that business technology executives cite security as their number one priority, well ahead of other critical technology initiatives, including collaboration software, cloud computing, and analytics, rounding out the top four. But budgets are under pressure and CISOs have to prioritize. It's not like they have an open checkbook. They have to contend with other key initiatives like those just mentioned to secure the funding. And what about zero trust? Can you go out and buy zero trust or is it a framework, a mindset in a series of best practices applied to create a security consciousness throughout the organization? Can you implement zero trust? In other words, if a machine or human is not explicitly allowed access, then access is denied. Can you implement that policy without constricting organizational agility? The question is, what's the most practical way to apply that premise and what role does infrastructure play as the enforcer? How does automation play in the equation? The fact is that today's approach to cyber, resilient, cyber resilience can't be an either or, it has to be an and conversation, meaning you have to ensure data protection while at the same time advancing the mission of the organization with as little friction as possible. And don't even talk to me about the edge. That's really going to keep you up at night. Hello and welcome to this special CUBE presentation, a blueprint for trusted infrastructure made possible by Dell Technologies. In this program, we explore the critical role that trusted infrastructure plays in cybersecurity strategies, how organizations should think about the infrastructure side of the cybersecurity equation, and how Dell specifically approaches securing infrastructure for your business. We'll dig into what it means to transform and evolve toward a modern security infrastructure that's both trusted and agile. First up are Pete Gear and Steve Keniston. They're both senior cybersecurity consultants at Dell Technologies. And they're going to talk about the company's philosophy and approach to trusted infrastructure. And then we're going to speak to Parasar Kodati, who's a senior consultant for storage at Dell Technologies to understand where and how storage plays in this trusted infrastructure world. And then finally, Rob Emsley, who heads product marketing for data protection and cybersecurity. He's going to take a deeper dive with Rob into data protection and explain how it has become a critical component of a comprehensive cybersecurity strategy. Okay, let's get started. Pete Gear, Steve Keniston, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming into the Marlboro Studios today. Great to be here, Dave. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Good to see you. Great to see you guys, Pete. Start by talking about the security landscape. You heard my little rap up front. Yeah. What, what are you seeing? I thought you wrapped it up really well and you touched on all the key points, right? Technology is ubiquitous today. It's everywhere. It's no longer confined to a monolithic data center. It lives at the edge. It lives in front of us. It lives in our pockets and smartphones. Along with that is data. And as you said, organizations are managing sometimes 10 to 20 times the amount of data that they were just five years ago. And along with that, cybercrime has become a very profitable uh, enterprise. In fact, it's been more than 10 years since uh, the NSA chief actually called cybercrime the biggest transfer of wealth in history. That was 10 years ago. Mm. And we've seen nothing but accelerating cybercrime and really sophistication of how those attacks are, are, uh, are perpetrated. And so the new security landscape is really more of an evolution. We're finally seeing security catch up with all of the technology adoption, all the build out, the work from home and work from anywhere that we've seen over the last couple of years. We're finally seeing organizations, and really it goes beyond the IT directors. It's a board level discussion today. Security's become a board level discussion. So. Yeah, I think that's true as yeah. well. 
it's like it used to be that security was, okay, the SecOps team, you're responsible for security. Now you've got the developers are involved, the business lines are involved, it's part of onboarding for most companies. You know, yeah. Steve, this concept of zero trust, it was kind of a buzzword before the pandemic, and I feel like I've often said it's now become a, a mandate, but it's, it's, it's still fuzzy to a lot of people. How do you guys think about zero trust? What does it mean to you? How does it fit? Yeah, I thought, again, I thought your opening was fantastic in, in this whole lead into to what is zero trust. It had been a buzzword for a long time, and now, ever since the federal government came out with their implementation or, or desire to drive zero trust, a lot more people are taking it a lot more seriously because I don't think they've seen the government do this. But ultimately, let's see, ultimately it's just like you said, right? If, if you don't have trust to those particular devices, uh, applications, or data, you can't get at it. The question is, and, and you phrase it perfectly, can you implement that as well as allow the business to be as agile as it needs to be in order to be competitive? Because we're seeing with your whole uh, notion around uh, DevOps and the ability to kind of build, make, deploy, build, make, deploy, right? They still need that functionality, but it also needs to be trusted, it needs to be secure, and things can't get away from you. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. We have attended every uh, reinforce since 2019, and the narrative, there is, hey, everything in, this, in the cloud is great. You know, and, and this narrative around, oh, security is a big problem, is, you know, doesn't help the industry. The fact is that the big hyperscalers, they're not strapped for talent, but CISOs are. They don't have the, the capabilities to really apply all these best practices. They're, they're playing whack-a-mole. So they look to companies like yours mm -hmm. to take their R, your R&D and bake it into security products and solutions. So what are the critical aspects of the so-called Dell Trusted Infrastructure that we should be thinking about? Yeah, well, Dell Trusted Infrastructure for us is a way for us to describe uh, the, the work that we do through design, development, and even delivery of our IT systems. So Dell Trusted Infrastructure includes our storage, it includes our servers, our networking, our data protection, our hyper-converged, everything that infrastructure always has been. It's just that today, customers consume that infrastructure at the edge, as a service, in a multi-cloud environment. I mean, I, I view the cloud as really a way for organizations to become more agile and to become more flexible, and also to control costs. I don't think organizations move to the cloud or move to a multi-cloud environment to enhance security. So I don't see cloud computing as a panacea for security. I see it as another attack surface and another uh, aspect in front that organizations and, and security organizations and departments have to manage. It's part of their infrastructure today, whether it's in their data center, in a cloud, or at the edge. I mean, I think it's a huge point because a lot of people think, oh, the data's in the cloud, I'm good. It's, it's like, we, Steve, we've talked about, oh, why do I have to back up my data? It's in the cloud. Well, you might have to recover it someday. So <laughs> I don't know if you have anything to add to that or any additional thoughts on it. No, I mean, I, I, think, I think like uh, what, what Pete was saying, when it, comes to, when it comes to all these new vectors for attack surfaces, you know, people did choose the cloud in order to be more agile, more flexible, and all that did was open up to the CISOs who need to pay attention to now, okay, where can I possibly be attacked? I need to be thinking about, is that secure? And part of, the, part of that is Dell now also understands and thinks about as we're building solutions, is it, is it a trusted development life cycle? So we have our own trusted development life cycle. How many times in the past did you used to hear about uh, vendors saying you got to patch your software because of this? We think about what changes to our software and what implementations and what enhancements we deliver can actually cause from a security perspective and make sure we don't give up or, or have security become a whole just in order to implement a feature. We got to think about those things. Yeah. And as Pete alluded to, our secure supply chain. So all the way through, knowing what you're going to get when you actually receive it is going to be secure and not be tampered with becomes vitally important. Uh, and, and Pete and I were talking earlier, when you have tens of thousands of devices that need to be delivered, whether it be storage or laptops or PCs or or whatever it is, you want to be, tr you want to know that 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 those devices are can be trusted. Okay, guys, maybe Pete, you could talk about the how Dell thinks about its its framework and its philosophy of cybersecurity, and then sure. specifically what Dell's advantages are relative to the competition. Yeah, definitely, Dave. Thank you. So I, we've talked a lot about Dell as a uh, technology provider, but one thing Dell also is is a partner in this larger ecosystem. We realize that. 
Security, whether it's a zero trust paradigm or any other kind of security in, uh, environment, is an ecosystem uh, with a lot of different vendors. So we look at three areas. Uh, one is protecting data and systems. We know that it starts with and ends with data. Um, that helps organizations combat threats across their entire infrastructure. And what it means is Dell's embedding security features consistently across our portfolios of storage, servers, networking. The second is enhancing cyber resiliency. Um, over the last decade, a lot of the funding and spending has been in protecting or trying to prevent cyber threats, not necessarily in responding to and recovering from threats. Right. We call that resiliency. Organizations need to build resiliency across their organization. So not only can they withstand a threat, but they can respond, recover, and continue with their operations. And the third is overcoming security complexity. Security is hard. It's more difficult because of the, the things we've talked about, about distributed data, distributed technology, and, and uh, attack surfaces everywhere. And so we're enabling organizations to scale confidently, to continue their business, but know that all, uh, all of the IT decisions that they're making um, have these intrinsic security features and are built and delivered in a consistent, secure way. So those are kind of the three pillars. Maybe yeah. we could end on what you guys see as the key differentiators uh, that people should know about that, that Dell brings to the table. Maybe each of you could take, take, you take a shot at that. Yeah, I, I think, first of all, from, from a holistic portfolio perspective, right, the uh, secure supply chain and the secure development lifecycle permeate through everything Dell does when, when building things. So we build things with security in mind. All the way from, as Pete mentioned, from, from creation to delivery. We want to make sure you have that, that secure uh, um, device or, or asset. That permeates everything from servers, networking, storage, data protection, through, through uh, hyper-converged, through, through everything. That, to me, is a, really a key asset because that means you, can, you understand when you receive something, it, it's a trusted piece of your infrastructure. I think the other core component to think about, and Pete mentioned, as Dell being a partner for... Um, making sure you can deliver these things, is that even though those are, that's part of our framework, these pillars are our framework of how we want to deliver security, it's also important to understand that we are partners and that you don't need to rip and replace, but as you start to put in new components, you can be, you can be assured that the components that you're replacing as you're evolving, as you're growing, as you're moving to the cloud, as you're moving to more on-prem type services or whatever, that your environment is secure. I think those are two key things. Got it. Okay, Pete, bring us home. Yeah, I think one of one of the big advantages of Dell uh, is our scope and, uh, and our scale. Right, we're a large technology vendor that's been around for decades, and we develop and sell almost every piece of technology. We also know that organizations are, might make different decisions, and so we have a large services organization with a lot of experienced services people that can help customers along their security journey. Uh, depending on uh, w whatever type of infrastructure or solutions that they're looking at. The other thing we do is make it very easy to consume our technology, whether that's traditional on-premise, in a multi-cloud environment, uh, or as a service. And so the best of breed technology can be consumed in any variety of fashion and know that you're getting that consistent, secure infrastructure that Dell provides. Well, and Dell's got the probably top supply chain, not only in the tech business, but probably any business. And so you can actually take, take your dog food and then and allow other people, your champagne, sorry, <laughs> allow other people to you know, share, share best practices with your, with your customers. All right, guys, thanks so much for Great. coming Thank on theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. Okay, keep it right there. After this short break, we'll be back to drill into the storage domain. You're watching a blueprint for trusted infrastructure on theCUBE, the leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage. Be right back. Concern over cyber attacks is now the norm for organizations of all sizes. The impact of these attacks can be operationally crippling, expensive, and have long-term ramifications. Organizations have accepted the reality of not if, but when, from boardrooms to IT departments, and are now moving to increase their cybersecurity preparedness. They know that security transformation is foundational to digital transformation. And while no one can do it alone, Dell Technologies can help you fortify with modern security. Modern security is built on three pillars, 
Protect your data and systems by modernizing your security approach with intrinsic features in hardware and processes from a provider with a holistic presence across the entire IT ecosystem. Enhance your cyber resiliency by understanding your current level of resiliency for defending your data and preparing for business continuity and availability in the face of attacks. Overcome security complexity by simplifying and automating your security operations to enable scale, insights, and extend resources through service partnerships. From advanced capabilities that intelligently scale, a holistic presence throughout IT, and decades as a leading global technology provider will stop at nothing to help keep you secure. Okay, we're back digging into trusted infrastructure with Paris Arcadati. He's a senior consultant for product marketing and storage at Dell Technologies. Paris, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Great to be with you, Dave. Yeah, coming from Hyderabad, awesome. Uh, so I really appreciate you uh, coming on the program. Let's start with talking about your point of view on what cybersecurity resilience means to, to Dell generally, but storage specifically. Yeah, so for something like storage, you know, we are talking about the data layer, Dave. And if you look at cybersecurity, it's all about securing your uh, data applications and infrastructure. It has been a very mature field at the network and application layers. And there are a lot of great technologies, right? From you know, enabling zero trust, uh, advanced authentications, uh, identity management systems, and so on. And, and in fact, you know, with the advent of you know, the, the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning, really these detection tools for cybersecurity have really evolved in the network and the application spaces. So for storage, what it means is how can you bring them to the data layer, right? How can you bring you know, the principles of uh, zero trust to the data layer? Uh, how can you leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to look at you know, access patterns and make intelligent decisions about maybe an indicator of uh, a compromise and identify them ahead of time, just like you know, how it's happening in other layers of, um, of, of applications. And when it comes to cyber resilience, it's, it's basically a strategy which assumes that a threat is imminent. And it's a good assumption with, with the severity and the frequency of the attacks that are happening. And the question is, how do we fortify the infrastructure, in this rich infrastructure, to withstand those attacks and have a plan, a response plan where we can recover the data and make sure the business continuity is not affected. So that's uh, really cybersecurity and cyber resiliency at, at storage layer. And of course, there are technologies like, you know, um, uh, and network isolation, um, immutability, and all these principles need to be applied at the storage level as well. Let me have a follow up on that, if I may. The intelligence that you talked about, that AI and machine learning, is that, do you, do you build that into the infrastructure or is that sort of a separate software module that, that points at various you know, infrastructure components. How, how does that work? Both, Dave. Um, right at the data storage level, um, we have come with various data characteristics. Depending on the nature of data, we developed a lot of signals to see what could be a good indicator of a compromise. Um, and there are also additional applications like Cloud IQ is the best example, which is like an infrastructure-wide health monitoring system for Dell infrastructure. And now we have elevated that uh, to include cybersecurity as well. So these signals are being gathered at Cloud IQ level and other applications as well, so that we can make those decisions about compromise. And we can either cascade that intelligence and alert stream upstream for uh, security teams, um, so that they can take actions in platforms like sign systems, XDR systems, and so on. But when it comes to which layer the intelligence is, it has to be at every layer where it makes sense, where we have the information to make a decision. And being closest to the data, we have uh, we are basically monitoring you know, the various patterns in data access, who is accessing, um, are they crossing across any geofencing? Uh, is there any mass deletion that is happening or mass encryption that is happening? and we are able to uh, detect uh, those uh, patterns and flag them as indicators of compromise and, and allowing automated response, manual control, and so on for IT teams. 
Yeah, thank you for that explanation. So at Dell Technologies World, we were there in May. It was one of the first you know, live shows that, that we did in the spring, certainly one of yes. the largest. And I interviewed Ch Shannon Champion and my huge takeaway from the storage side was the degree to which you guys uh, emphasized security uh, within the operating systems. I mean, it really, I mean, PowerMax, more than half, I think, of the features were security related, but also the rest of the portfolio. So can you talk about the, the security aspects of the Dell storage portfolio specifically? Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to data security and broadly data availability, right in the context of cyber resiliency, um, Dell storage, uh, this, you know, these elements have been at the core of our, um, a core strength for the portfolio and, and a source of differentiation for the storage portfolio. You know, with almost decades of collective experience of building highly resilient architectures, for mission critical data, something like PowerMax system, which is the most secure storage platform for high-end enterprises. Um, and now with the increased focus on cybersecurity, we are extending those core technologies of high availability and adding modern detection systems, modern data isolation techniques to offer a comprehensive solution to the customer so that they don't have to piece together multiple things to ensure data security or data resiliency, but a well-designed and well-architected solution by design is uh, delivered to them uh, to ensure uh, cyber protection at the data layer. Got it. Um, you know, we were talking earlier to Steve Keniston and Pete Gear uh, about this notion of Dell trusted infrastructure. How does storage fit into that as a component of that sort of overall you know, theme? Yeah, yeah. And, and, you so, know, let me, and let me say this, if, if you, you could address this, because a lot of people might be skeptical that I can actually have security and at the same time, not constrict my organizational agility. That's all, you know, not an or, it's an and. How, how do you actually do that? If you could address both of those, that would be great. Definitely. So for Dell Trusted Infrastructure, cyber resiliency is a key component of that. And just as I mentioned, you know, uh, air gap isolation, it really started with, you know, power protect cyber recovery. You know, that was a solution more than three years ago we launched, and that was first in the industry, which paved way to, you know, kind of data isolation being a core element of data management and uh, you know, for, for uh, data infrastructure. And since then we have implemented these technologies within different storage platforms as well. So the customers have the flexibility, depending on their data landscape, they can approach, they can do the right data isolation architecture, right? Either natively from the storage platform or consolidate things into the backup platform and isolate from there. Mm -hmm. and, and the other key thing we, we focus in trusted infrastructure, Dell, infra, uh, Dell trusted infrastructure, is you know, the goal of simplifying security for the customers. So one good example here is uh, you know, being able to respond to these cyber threats or indicators of compromise is one thing, but an IT security team may not be looking at uh, the dashboard of the storage systems constantly, right? Uh, storage administration uh, admins may be looking at it. So how can we build this intelligence and provide this upstream platforms so that they have a single pane of glass to understand security landscape across applications, across networks, firewalls, as well as storage infrastructure and, and compute infrastructure. So that's one of the key ways where how we are helping simplify the um, kind of the ability to uh, respond, ability to detect and respond these threats uh, in real time uh, for security teams. And you mentioned, you know, about zero trust and how it's a balance of, you know, not uh, kind of restricting users or put heavy burden on, you know, multi-factor authentication and so on. And this really starts with, you know, what we are doing is provide all the tools, you know, when it comes to advanced authentication, uh, supporting external identity management systems, multi-factor authentication, encryption, all these things are intrinsically built into these platforms. Now the question is, the customers are actually one of the key steps is to identify uh, what are the most critical parts of uh, uh, their business or what are the applications uh, 
that the most critical uh, business operations depend on and similarly identify uh, mission critical data where part of your response plan, where it cannot be compromised, where you need to have a way to recover. Once you do this identification, then the level of security can be really determined um, by, uh, by security teams, by the infrastructure teams. And you know, another you know, intelligence that gives a lot of flexibility uh, for, for even developers to do this is, today we have APIs um, that, so you can not only track these alerts at the data infrastructure level, but you can use our APIs to take concrete actions like blocking a certain user or increasing the level of authentication based on the threat level that has been perceived uh, at the application layer or at the network layer. So there is a lot of flexibility that is built into this by design so that depending on the criticality of the data, criticality of the application, number of users affected, these decisions have to be made from time to time. And it's, as you mentioned, it's, it's a balance, right? And sometimes, you know, if, if an organization had a recent attack, you know, the, the level of awareness is very high uh, against cyber attacks. So for, for a time, you know, these, these settings may be a bit difficult to deal with, but then it's, it's a decision um, that has to be made by security teams as well. Got it. So you're surfacing what may be hidden KPIs that are you know, buried inside, for instance, the storage system through APIs up, upstream into a dashboard so that somebody can you know, dig into the storage tunnel, extract that data, and then somehow you know, populate that dashboard. You're saying you're automating that, that, that workflow. That's a great example and you may have others, but is that the correct understanding? Absolutely, and it's a two-way integration. Let's say a detect a, an attack has been detected at a completely different layer, right? In the application layer or at a firewall. We can respond to those as well. So it's a two-way integration. We can cascade things up as well as uh, respond to uh, threats that have been detected elsewhere um, uh, through the API. That's great, all right, and hey. Zero Trust API for PowerScale is, is the best example for that. Uh, excellent, uh, so thank you, appreciate that. Get, get Give us the last word, put a bow on this and, and, and bring this segment home, please. Absolutely. So at Dell, uh, uh, storage portfolio um, using advanced data isolation um, with air gap, uh, having machine learning based algorithms to detect uh, indicators of compromise and having rigorous mechanisms um, with granular snapshots, being able to recover data and restore applications to maintain business continuity uh, is what we deliver to customers. Uh, and these are areas where a lot of innovation is happening, a lot of product focus, as well as, you know, if you look at the professional services, all the way from engineering to professional services, the way we build these systems, the way we, we configure and architect these systems, um, cyber security and protection uh, is a key focus uh, for all these activities. And dell.com slash securities uh, is where you can uh, learn a lot about these initiatives. That's great, thank you. You know, at the recent uh, Reinforce uh, event in, in Boston, we heard a lot uh, from AWS about, you know, detection and response and DevOps and machine learning and some really cool stuff. We heard a little bit about ransomware, but I'm glad you brought up air gaps because we heard virtually nothing in the keynotes about air gaps. That's an example of where, you know, the, the CISO has to pick up from where the cloud leaves off as I was in front. Um, and so number one and number two, we didn't hear a ton about how the cloud is making the life of the CISO simpler. And that's really, uh, my takeaway is, is in part anyway, your job and companies like Dell. So Paris, I really appreciate the insights. Thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much, Dave. It's always great to be in these uh, conversations. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back with Rob Emsley to talk about data protection strategies and what's in the Dell portfolio. You're watching theCUBE. Data is the currency of the global economy. It has value to your organization and cyber criminals. In the age of ransomware attacks, companies need secure and resilient IT infrastructure to safeguard their data from aggressive cyber attacks. As part of the Dell Technologies infrastructure portfolio, PowerStore and PowerMax combine storage innovation with advanced security that adheres to stringent government regulations and corporate compliance requirements. 
Security starts with multi-factor authentication, enabling only authorized admins to access your system using assigned roles. Tamper-proof audit logs track system usage and changes so IT admins can identify suspicious activity and act. With snapshot policies, you can quickly automate the protection and recovery process for your data. PowerMax Secure snapshots cannot be deleted by any user prior to the retention time expiration. Dell Technologies also makes sure your data at rest stays safe with PowerStore and PowerMax. Data encryption protects your flash drive media from unauthorized access if it's removed from the data center while adhering to stringent FIPS 140-2 security requirements. Cloud IQ brings together predictive analytics, anomaly detection, and machine learning with proactive policy-based security assessments, monitoring, and alerting. The result? Intelligent insights that help you maintain the security health status of your storage environment. And if a security breach does occur, PowerProtect Cyber Recovery isolates critical data, identifies suspicious activity, and accelerates data recovery. Using the automated data copy feature, unchangeable data is duplicated in a secure digital vault. Then an operational air gap isolates the vault from the production and backup environments. Architected with security in mind, Dell EMC PowerStore and PowerMax provide storage innovation so your data is always available and always secure wherever and whenever you need it. Welcome back to A Blueprint for Trusted Infrastructure. We're here with Rob Emsley, who's the Director of Product Marketing for Data Protection and Cybersecurity. Rob, good to see you, new role. Yeah, good to be back, Dave, good to see you. Yeah, it's been uh, a while since we chatted last, and you know, one of the changes in, in my world is that uh, I've expanded my responsibilities uh, beyond uh, data protection marketing to also focus on uh, cybersecurity marketing, specifically for our infrastructure solutions group. Uh, so certainly, that's um, you know something that really has driven us to you know to come and have this conversation with you today. So data protection obviously has become a, an increasingly important component of the cybersecurity space. I, I don't think necessarily of you know traditional backup and recovery as security, it's an, to me it's an adjacency. I know some companies have said, oh yeah, now we're a security company. They're kind of chasing the valuation sure. bubble. Um, Dell's interesting because you, you have you know, data protection in, in the form of backup and recovery and data management, but you also have security, you know, direct security capabilities. So you're sort of bringing those two worlds together. And it sounds like your responsibility is to, to connect those, those dots, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, the reality is, is that security is a, uh, a multi-layer discipline. Um, I think the, the days of thinking that it's one uh, or another um, technology that you can use or process that you can use to uh, make your uh, organization secure uh, are long gone. I mean, certainly, um, you're absolutely correct. If you think about the backup and recovery space, I mean, people have been doing that for years. You know, certainly backup and recovery is all about the recovery. It's all about getting yourself back up and running when bad things happen. And one of the realities, unfortunately, today is that one of the worst things that can happen is cyber attacks. Mm. You know, ransomware, uh, malware, uh, are all things that are top of mind for all organizations today. And that's why you see a lot of technology and a lot of innovation going into the backup and recovery space. Because if you have a copy, uh, a good copy of your data, then that is really the, the first place you go to recover from a cyber attack. And that's why it's so important. The reality is, is that unfortunately, the cyber criminals keep on getting smarter. I don't know how it happens, mm -hmm. but one of the things that is happening is that the days of them just going after your production data uh, are no longer the only challenge that you have. They go after your, your backup data as well. So over the last 
um, half a decade, Dell Technologies with its backup and recovery portfolio has introduced the concept of isolated uh, cyber recovery vaults. And that is really the, you know, we've had many conversations about that over the years. Yeah. Um, and that's really a, a big tenant of what we do in the data protection portfolio. So this idea of, of cybersecurity resilience, that definition is evolving. What does it mean to you? Yeah, I think um, the, uh, the analyst team over at Gartner, uh, they wrote a, a very insightful paper called, uh, you will be hacked, embrace the breach. And the whole uh, basis of this analysis is, so much money has been spent on prevention is that what's out of balance is the amount of budget that companies have spent on cyber resilience. And cyber resilience is based upon the premise that you will be hacked, you have to embrace that fact and be ready and prepared to bring yourself back into business. You know, and that's really where cyber resiliency is very, very different than cyber uh, security and prevention, you know, and I think that balance of get your uh, security disciplines well funded, get your defenses as good as you can get them, but make sure that if the inevitable happens and you find yourself compromised, that you have a great recovery plan. And certainly a great recovery plan is really the basis of any good solid data protection backup and recovery uh, philosophy. So if I had to do a SWOT analysis, we don't have to do the WOT, but let's focus on the S. Um, what would you say are Dell's strengths in this you know, cybersecurity space as it relates to data protection? Um, one is we've been doing it a long time. You know, we talk a lot about uh, Dell's data protection being proven and modern. You know, certainly um, the experience that we've had over literally three decades of providing enterprise scale data protection solutions to our customers has really allowed us to have a lot of insight into what works and what doesn't. As I mentioned to you, one of the unique differentiators of our solution uh, is the cyber recovery uh, vaulting um, solution that we introduced a little over five years ago, five, six years. Um, Power protect cyber recovery uh, is something which has become a unique capability for customers to adopt uh, on top of their investment in Dell Technologies data protection. You know, the, the unique elements of our solution are really threefold, and it's, we call them the three I's. It's isolation, it's immutability, and it's intelligence. And the, the isolation part is really so important because you need to reduce the attack surface of your good known copies of data. You know, you need to put it in a location that the bad actors can't get to it. And that really is the, 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 the essence of a cyber recovery vault. Interestingly enough, you're starting to see the market throw out that word um, you know, from many other places, but really it comes down to having a real discipline that you don't allow the security of your cyber recovery vault to be compromised insofar as allowing it to be controlled from outside of the vault, you know, allowing it to be controlled by your backup application. Our cyber recovery vaulting technology is independent of the backup infrastructure. It uses it, but it controls its own security. And that is so, so important. It's like having uh, a, a vault that the only way to open it is from the inside, you know, and think about that if you think about, you know, vaults in banks or mm -hmm. vaults in your home. Normally, you have a keypad on the outside. Think of our cyber recovery vault as having its security controlled from inside of the vault. So you know? nobody can get in, nothing can get in unless it's already in, and if it's already in, then it's trusted. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so isolation is the key. And then you, said, you mentioned immutability is the second piece. Yeah, so immutability is, is also something which has been around for a long time. People talk about uh, backup immutability or immutable backup copies. So immutability is just the, the, the additional um, uh, technology that allows the data that's inside of the vault to be unchangeable. 
you know, but again, that immutability, you know, your mileage varies, you know, when you look across the, uh, the different um, offers that are out there in the market, especially in the backup industry. You make a very valid point earlier that the backup vendors in the market seems to be security washing their marketing messages. I mean, everybody is leaning into the ever-present danger of cybersecurity. Not a bad thing, but the reality is, is that you have to have the technology to back it up, you know, quite literally. Yeah, yeah no pun intended. <laughs> and then, actually pun intended. Now, what about the intelligence piece of it? Uh, that's, that's AI, ML, where does that fit? For sure, so the intelligence piece is delivered by um, a uh, solution called CyberSense. And CyberSense for us is what really uh, gives you the confidence that what you have in your cyber recovery vault is a good, clean copy of data. So it's looking at the backup copies that get driven into the cyber vault, and it's looking for anomalies. So it's not looking for signatures of malware. You know, that's what your antivirus software does. That's what your endpoint protection software does. That's on the prevention side of the equation. But what we're looking for is we're looking to ensure that the data that you need when all hell breaks loose is good. And that when you get a request to restore and recover your business, you go, right, let's go and do it. And you don't have any concern that what you have in the vault has been compromised. So uh, CyberSense is really a, a unique analytics solution in the market based upon the fact that it, it isn't looking at, at cursory indicators of, of, um, of, of, uh, of malware infection or, or, or ransomware uh, introduction. It's doing full content analytics, you know, looking at, you know, has the data um, in any way uh, changed? Has it suddenly become encrypted? Has it suddenly become um, different to how it was in the previous scan? So that anomaly detection is very, very different. It's looking for, um, you know, um, like different characteristics that really are an indicator that something is going on. Mm. And of course, if it sees it, you immediately get flagged. But the good news is, is that you always have in the vault the previous copy of good known data, which now becomes your restore point. So we're talking to Rob Emsley about how data protection fits into what Dell calls DTI Dell trusted infrastructure. And, and I'm, I want to come back, Rob, to this notion of and not or, because I think a lot of people are skeptical, like how can I have great security and not introduce friction into my organization? Is that an automation play? How, how does Dell tackle that problem? I mean, I think a lot of it is across our infrastructure is, is security has to be built in. I mean, intrinsic security within our servers, within our storage devices, uh, within our uh, elements of our backup infrastructure. I mean, security, multi-factor authentication, um, you know, elements that make the overall infrastructure secure. You know, we have capabilities that you know, allow us to identify whether or not configurations have changed. You know, we'll probably be talking about that a little bit more to you uh, later in the segment. But the, the essence is, is um, security is not a bolt-on. It has to be part of the overall infrastructure. And that's so true, um, certainly in the data protection space. Give us the, the, the bottom line on, on how you see Dell's key differentiators, maybe you could talk about, the, uh, Dell of course always talks about its portfolio, but, but why should customers you know, lead in to Dell in, in this whole cyber resilience space? Um, you know, staying on the data protection space, as I mentioned, the, the, the work we've been doing um, to um, introduce this cyber resiliency solution for data protection uh, is in our opinion as good as it gets. You know, the, you know, you've spoken uh, to a number of our, of our best customers, whether it be Bob Bender from Founders Federal, mm. or more recently uh, at Dell Technologies World, you spoke to Tony Bryson yep. uh, from the town of Gilbert. Um, and these are customers that we've had for many years that have implemented cyber recovery vaults 
And at the end of the day, they can now sleep at night. You know, that's really the, the peace of mind that they have is that the insurance that a data protection from Dell Cyber Recovery Vault, a Parapatech Cyber Recovery Solution gives them, you know, really allows them to, you know, just have the assurance that they don't have to pay a ransom. If they have a, uh, an insider uh, threat issue um, and, you know, all the way down to data deletion is they know that um, what's in the Cyber Recovery Vault is good and ready for them to recover from. Great. Well, Rob, congratulations on the new scope of responsibility. I like how you know your organization is expanding as the threat surface is expanding. As we said, data protection becoming an adjacency to, to security, not security in and of itself, a key component of a comprehensive security strategy. Rob Emsley, thank you for coming back in the cube. Good to see you again. You too, Dave, thanks. All right, in a moment, I'll be back to wrap up a blueprint for trusted infrastructure. You're watching the cube. Every day, it seems there's a new headline about the devastating financial impacts or trust that's lost due to ransomware or other sophisticated cyber attacks. But with our help, Dell Technologies customers are taking action by becoming more cyber resilient and deterring attacks so they can greet students daily with a smile. They're ensuring that a range of essential government services remain available 24-7 to citizens wherever they're needed. From swiftly dispatching public safety personnel or sending an inspector to sign off on a homeowner's dream, to protecting, restoring, and sustaining our precious natural resources for future generations. With ever-changing cyber attacks targeting organizations in every industry, our cyber resiliency solutions are right on the money, providing the security and controls you need. We help customers protect and isolate critical data from ransomware and other cyber threats, delivering the highest data integrity to keep your doors open, and ensuring that hospitals and healthcare providers have access to the data they need, so patients get life-saving treatment without fail. If a cyber incident does occur, our intelligence, analytics, and responsive team are in a class by themselves, helping you reliably recover your data and applications, so you can quickly get your organization back up and running. With Dell Technologies behind you, you can stay ahead of cybercrime, safeguarding your business and your customers' vital information. Learn more about how Dell Technologies cyber resiliency solutions can provide true peace of mind for you. The adversary is highly capable, motivated and well-equipped and is not standing still. Your job is to partner with technology vendors and increase the cost of the bad guys getting to your data so that their ROI is reduced and they go elsewhere. The growing issues around cybersecurity will continue to drive forward thinking in cyber resilience. We heard today that it is actually possible to achieve infrastructure security while at the same time minimizing friction to enable organizations to move quickly in their digital transformations. A zero trust framework must include vendor R&D and innovation that builds security, designs it into infrastructure products and services from the start, not as a bolt on, but as a fundamental ingredient of the cloud, hybrid cloud, private cloud to edge operational model. The bottom line is if you can't trust your infrastructure, your security posture is weakened. Remember, this program is available on demand in its entirety at thecube.net and the individual interviews are also available. And you can go to Dell's Security Solutions landing page for, for, for more information. Go to dell.com slash security solutions. That's dell.com slash security solutions. This is Dave Vellante of theCUBE. Thanks for watching a blueprint for trusted infrastructure made possible by Dell. We'll see you next time. <laughs>